Hello and welcome back to Complex Analysis, a video series where we are still talking about contour integrals in the complex plane. And indeed, in today's part 26, we will talk about a very special contour integral. And this will help us to prove Cauchy's integral formula, which we will discuss in the next video. However, you already know, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. All supporters can download the quiz or the PDF version of this video. And with that, let's start. So first, please recall, in the last video we have generalized Cauchy's theorem for such domains here. And now today we will talk about curves that have exactly the shape here on the boundary. And now because it looks a little bit like a keyhole, it's often simply called a keyhole contour. For this reason I also keep this name and now today let's discuss what we can do with such contour integrals. So first we take a function g that is defined on a disk. There the radius we call r and the middle point z0. Moreover we want that this function is holomorphic with only one exception point at z0. Of course there we already know some functions that fulfill that, for example 1 over z. However here the function g can be anything, it just needs to be holomorphic with this domain. Hence we have our disk here with the exception point z0 in the middle. And then we consider a contour integral in this domain that looks like such a keyhole. So for example it could look like this, so it's a closed curve inside the domain of g. Therefore, as we have learned in the last video, Cauchy's theorem tells us that the contour integral along this curve is zero. And please note, this holds no matter how this keyhole is formed or orientated. In particular, we see we can introduce two parameters here, and the first one should be the radius of the inner circle. So let's call this one simply epsilon. And the second parameter should be simply the width of the corridor here. And maybe let's call this one simply delta. Hence you see we assume that the outer radius here for this circle is fixed for our discussion here. Okay then the name we give the curve is gamma with index epsilon delta. And then our result here is no matter how small the positive numbers epsilon and delta are we always get that the contour integral is zero. Okay, that's not new, but now we want to use that and split the integral up into four parts. And I think it's clear how we do it. We take the outer circle, the two lines here and the inner circle. Okay, then I would say let's give them names where we use upper indices. Hence the outer circle should be gamma one. Then comes the first line, which is gamma two then the inner circle which is gamma 3 and then the last line gamma 4. Ok, now I can tell you what I want to do in the end is to send delta to 0. And then the question is what can we say about the contour integrals of all these curves here. Obviously the first thing we can conclude from above is that the sum of all these contour integrals along these curves here is 0. Now of course this fact holds no matter how small delta is chosen. Therefore in the next step let's go with delta to zero and let's see what happens to all integrals separately. In other words let's start with the first one gamma one. There you should immediately see if we set delta to zero we have the full circle. Therefore let's call this curve capital gamma with index one. Ok, and then let's look what is the difference between both contour integrals. So we consider the absolute value between the one and the other one. And then we simply know this is the absolute value of a new contour integral. Namely the contour integral along this small line there. So maybe I don't give it a name, I just draw a small line there. So you see we don't need a name because we can immediately do the standard estimate which is given as the maximum of the absolute value of g of z, where z goes through the curve, times the length of the curve. And now it should be obvious that this length goes to zero when delta goes to zero. So we can simply conclude the whole thing goes to zero. 
So you see, this is a very important fact, because it means for the limit delta to zero, this integral here goes to this integral. So in other words, in the limit we are able to use the full circle. Okay, then let's go to the next path, which could be our other circle, the small circle in the middle. We first consider this one now, because you see the whole argument from above works here as well. This means that in the limit delta to zero, here we can also use the full circle. However, the only thing you should note is that the orientation is different from before. And moreover, here we also use the index epsilon, because it's the radius of this circle. Okay, so you see, half of the discussion is done, so let's go to the corridor. This means both lines here we should consider together. You see this because if we send delta to zero, they will get closer and closer together. Hence, you see, the idea here would be that we close the curve, such that we have a closed curve. So for example, what we could do is to use such a rectangle. And then again, as always by Cauchy's theorem, we can conclude that the closed curve integral is just zero. And now you also know what one can do, we split it up into four parts again, and then we use this estimate from above for the two lines we added. And because they get smaller and smaller, when delta goes to zero, the integral along the small lines gets also to zero. Therefore, we can conclude that for delta to zero, only the two integrals along the two lines remain. Moreover, the result is then the sum of both integrals vanishes. Therefore, we can conclude in the limit delta to zero, the corridor is not important at all. So in summary, only the two circles remain in the limit process. To see this, please recall this was our equation from above, where all the four parts were included. Now, the last thing we showed above is that this middle part here vanishes. And the other two parts converge to full circles. In addition, please also recall, there we used capital gammas. Okay, then we can bring this on the other side, and then we have our result. Namely, the integral along the big circle is the same as the integral along the small circle. For this, please recall that the orientation of the small circle was different from the orientation of the big circle, and this is where we have the minus sign. Okay, I think the best way is to remember that with a picture. So if we have a contour integral with a very big circle, you can just substitute it with a small circle with the same orientation. Hence, this is a very nice result, because it means we can use a circle as small as we want. And please note, the only assumption we used here is that we have a holomorphic function with one exception point z0 here. Okay, and now this nice result we can use in the next video, where we want to prove Cauchy's integral formula. Therefore, I would say let's meet there again and have a nice day. Bye.